So hello and welcome. I'm Frederick Dunn and I'm welcoming you to my backyard apiary. Guess what's going on here? We have two decent weather days. Wednesday and Thursday of this week and this is October the 5th. So what I'm showing you first are several of the hives in my apiary. Look at the activity. Look what's going on. Everything's great. Now I'm going to show you a problem that you might encounter as a backyard beekeeper. The longer you keep the bees, the older your equipment gets. Some of the wood warps and twists and gets weathered. And the bees might try to scoot out areas where you don't want them to. These are my triple nucleus hives, by the way. Look how great they are. Insulated tops, that's all they need. They've got honey and resources. They're bringing in pollen. But the days are numbered. Good weather days, that is. This is that Apame hive. It uh, is doing okay, not super, but they're still hanging in there. That's the good news. And I'm going to show you some other hives that are not in such great shape. This is in the state of Pennsylvania, northeastern United States. Look at this Hoover hive with a medium super on it, insulated B-Max cover, insulated inner cover, and look at that ridiculous wrap that's around it. And I tried to pull out this hive gate and it came apart, of course. I'm gonna swap that out. I am still using hive gates on other hives. I will not continue on this particular hive because they're in trouble. They also recently lost their queen. Look at the neighbors, they're doing great. The other good news is look at all the drones. So those late season uh, queen producers are still going to get some drones. I put a screen on here and you're going to see why in a minute because I'm going to pull this wrap that's designed to keep uh, trees protected from deer and rabbits and things like that. But I put it on there as an emergency. The bees were getting out the back. It's not what I wanted them to do. So we've got a medium super on a deep 10 frame Langstroth. This is a number nine screen, stainless steel, held on with stainless steel screws. I did that uh, just to keep the bees from getting robbed, actually. They chewed away at the Hoover Hive, which is coated in beeswax, of course. You can see dead bees under the screen there. And once they have an entrance, you know, they don't like to change that. That's why the front did not have a lot of activity, but the back did. And we're looking at the south side here. And... Uh, of course, bring every tool you think you might need, including different drill bits, of course. Screw bits. We'll get these out of here. Stainless steel screws. Save it for later. You never know. I might need it for something else. But I have to do something about this hive. That's what it's all about today. Look how they chewed the wood. Now, the problem was, when did I notice this? Well, the top box, the medium super there, didn't sit flush on that bottom box, the Hoover hive. So I didn't notice it until it was cold. And of course that was last winter. So where have I been? Well, doing these little temporary fixes, putting a screen on the back, putting expansion foam on that slatted rack because that thing was coming apart too. And I think it's time to pull these off all together. So what do you do? Do you really try to continue to fix this? Well, for me, not with this one. Look at all the propolis. Don't forget to use smoke when you're going to get into your beehives and you're going to do a massive reconfiguration like this. We're going to change out the hive entirely. Pull off the B-Max cover. There is a double bubble insulation in the top there. I started using that this year. I like that stuff a lot. Then, of course, the Bee Smart insulated inner cover, which did so well for me last winter. We're going to get that off of here and we're not going to need it for what I'm about to do. As I mentioned before, I just requeened this colony because they went queenless. And once again, bad beekeeping. I should have noticed that they'd been queenless for a while. Good news is, I got a new queen in there uh, before they started in with the laying workers. So that's not that big of a problem. But we're going to pull off this entire medium super. And we're going to pull the brood box, which is a 10 frame deep. We're going to set them aside because I'm going to put an entirely new hive. And all I'm going to do is transfer the frames over with the bees on them. And I'm going to show you that process step by step. Very easy once you've seen it. But there are some things to think about. The other thing is we're not moving the location of the hive. We're just swapping out equipment. And of course I'm going to be using an insulated hive this time. 
I just happen to have an extra Ape may beehive handy. I know a lot of people don't like plastic. I'm with you. I'm not a huge fan of plastic. But in a pinch, I'm going to use it. The other thing is I thought this would be a great day too to see if Ape may hive equipment is compatible with standard Langstroth woodenware. So we're going to deal with not just one but two colonies today. Two hives. We're going to pull these frames up. Light smoke. Don't overdo it. This colony is not strong. And here we look at the frame, withdrawn comb, that is acorn, one piece, heavy wax frames there. We're going to still use them and keep them. The colony's in decline. My fault there. Should have noticed it earlier. Had kind of a rash of uh, late season swarms this year, so the super's off. Got to get into the brood box now and pull that off. It's not too heavy. Got to get it off of that slatted rack, and you can see the slatted rack is damaged, so we're going to get rid of that too. In fact, we're going to get rid of the bottom board also. What do you do with equipment like this? Well, you cut it down and turn it into feeder shims. So that Hoover box, I'm going to cut that right in half and I'm going to get two feeder shims out of it. Cut off the top nice and flush, that slatted rack. I guess that'll be an educational tool. And the bottom board with the uh, hive gate on it. That'll go away. I do have hive gates on other hives, so I'm not going to say that that's the cause of the problems here. But the bees were looking for an alternate entrance. Keep in mind, the entrance was facing north. Now we know south by southeast is the best way to go, so why did it do it the other way? Because I like to see how the colonies do. So I've given this hive a number, number 28. And because it's on uh, steel electrical conduit here that's how it's supported i have to put a base on there for it to uh, sit on so i cut down some two by sixes matched it up and a one by two across the front and the back glued that in place and of course with exterior wood glue and we're just going to set that on there for now of course later we can strap it down we're going to put an Ape of May hive on here. We can strap it right to the conduit. And of course these T-posts are driven three feet into the ground. So this isn't going anywhere. And the landing board is 17 to 18 inches off the ground, which keeps it out of skunk scratching range. We don't want our bees to be eaten by skunks. So let's get the Ape of May Ergo hive on there. And it's got the uh, mouse guards already built in on the front. We're going to line it up perfectly because after we get everything in here, it's not going to move very easily because it's going to be heavy. Those are my Menorca chickens uh, crowing, announcing themselves. They don't like to be ignored. And here's the back of it, all closed up. It has a bottom board that's accessible, so you can pull it out the back there. Now I'm just going to get those frames into it. We're also going to look at the frames, so if you're worried and you want to see what's on those frames, since I have to transfer them one by one, I'm also going to set up another camera and show you both. So you'll see all angles here. Get that first frame out. We also know that it doesn't have anything on it, so I'm going to put that straight in the brood box. You see the grooves there in that box? That's set up so that you can put a divider board in there, and you could make five frame nucleus hives out of this. But this colony is full size, so we've got some capped honey here. That's good news. So they have some resources. They did not finish drawing out that uh, wax completely. But remember, that's an outside frame there. Capped wax is good. And it's in the brood box, too. So we've got honey for the super, and we've got honey in the brood box, as well as some brood. I'd also like to see the queen while we're looking through this. She's marked yellow. Yellow is the color for 2022. We've got some nectar in there. Good pollen. Great. They'll be needing that when they're developing their brood. And they are going to be developing brood. So it's very important to keep everything in the same order that the frames are in and the box we're pulling out of. Same order in the new box. This time of year, you would not checkerboard anything. We don't want to expand it. We want to keep all the brood areas close and tight. Lots of pollen there too. That's very comforting to know. They're going to need that. 
funny too that they loaded the pollen on the eastern side of the frames and uh, the western side of the frames they did not have much pollen I don't know what that's about they do tend to build their resources on the eastern side of these boxes first and so here we go we've got some bees on this one so this is not a strong colony but I also don't consider them a loss yet lots of pollen here too lots of bees just hanging out there this is an acorn single piece black plastic frame food grade plastic now this apa may hive should give them a boost because it's all insulated and there's definitely no gaps for the bees to get out of other than through that entrance and i like that the entrance we just have sliders so we can keep that as small as we'd like it to be and given the status of this colony we definitely want to keep their entrance small this time of year i'm looking at the brood comb too to see if there's any issues with it uh, they don't have a lot of varroa mites so that's good news they did uh, start to ignore their drones there you see in the lower left so there are some drones being cast out they're not helping them usually the nurse bees are re be right there helping them out but they're, they're killing them off and uh, also they're not wasting their time keeping that brood warm so we've had freezing temps previously this week and so of course they favor the brood of worker brood first and that's where they'll put their heater bees and that's where they'll concentrate their resources uh, in a time of decline so try to find that queen there she is yellow dot right there and uh, we've got lots of pollen there and we'd like to see her laying some eggs get some stuff going there's just a handful of eggs now these queens were just introduced the other colony that we're going to deal with today also has a new queen in it so they haven't had time to start building their brood so we're really pushing the limits here they've got to be hatching new brood by the end of October and we are going to put nutrition on for them I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do for that they seem to have pollen we want to make sure they have nectar um, the resources in the environment are dwindling of course this time of year and the leaves are even already starting to turn color if you can believe that so you might say why even bother with this colony did you really put a new queen in there just for this tiny colony yeah I did because if you've got the equipment I could just leave the colony and let them dwindle and die out I don't want to combine them with any other colonies because all the other colonies are super strong right now and I don't want to add extra boxes to them they're packing down for winter so that's what I'm doing with this one this configuration single deep and a medium is pretty much the standard here in my apiary going into winter and we want them to be insulated so I'm testing the APMA equipment this year we're going to see how they get through winter of course they're not starting with really strong colonies but this particular colony also has plenty of honey for the top so that medium super right on the end frame there again no surprise western end they did draw the comb so they have a place to put the resources and if we wanted to boost them this time of year it would be two to one sugar syrup so that would be 16 pounds of dry sugar to one gallon of fresh water you're gonna have to heat that up to get it to dissolve and that could help the bees if you like pro sweet you could also put that in there apma hives have a hive top feeder system that you're gonna see in a minute where you can put dry feed and or liquid so you could put the two to one on one side and if you've got pollen patties or something like those from hive alive now they put out their pollen patties last year they scored really well global patties makes them for them so they have high protein and uh but remember we've seen a lot of pollen here so and there is some pollen in the environment i think they're not completely lost we do have some bees up here and i think insulating the hive look at the condition of the hive that we took them out of that thing was venting everywhere rain was probably even running in that back opening and wrapping it with tree felt and putting a screen on it really wasn't doing anything for it so that's all beekeeper error remember the best thing you can do when it comes to a beehive is to provide them with shelter 
waterproof, windproof, weatherproof shelter. Insulation beyond that is a bonus, of course. Some capped honey here. So they've got resources, and considering the size of the colony right now, they're pretty small. Uh, they might have enough resources. I've had them get through winter on much less than this. So these bees weren't giving up. They were just queenless. And we have to move kind of fast, too. It is in the 60s in the sun. It's kind of warm. But this is too cold for brood, by the way. So you just want to push them together because the next time you inspect, you'll be pulling them apart from one of the sides there. And get that cover on and get these guys buttoned up. Now, if you're going to put feed on, I recommend not doing it on the exact same day that you've pulled the hive apart this time of year. Why is that? Well, there's a lot of free foragers around and honeybees are ready to rob each other out. So if we went straight to feeding right now, right after we've upset everything, I think uh, we also might be ringing the dinner bell for some of those robbing bees. And honeybees are their number one threat this time of year. But uh, I'll come back tomorrow which will be Thursday the 6th. It's also supposed to be 70 degrees. So we'll follow up, make sure everything looks good. We'll strap this hive down to the pipes there with a strap just in case we get heavy weather. And we'll get some syrup on one side and dry feed on the other side. I do happen to have some Hive Alive pollen patties. And I don't have small hive beetle issues either. So here's the back of the hive. Things are quieting down. We're situated on that stand pretty good. And here's the entrance. Oh, there's a drone getting tossed right there right away. Now you could expect after you open a beehive, this time of year you could expect some fighting because you've exposed them and the robbers are trying to get in. So I've just left the slider open just enough for this colony to come and go. Drones can get through it. There goes a nice fat male bee right there. No problem and uh, we'll get that feed on. So that's an entire transfer of a hive, a colony of bees into a new hive and getting rid of old weathered equipment that was definitely not gonna do well for them this coming winter. So look how tidy this is. I don't have to strap the box together because it's clamped. Top, the cover is clamped down to the medium super and the deep brood box is clamped to that and the bottom of that hive is integral to the brood box. Now we have another hive, number 18. Look at these guys, and we can see that that's a flow hive base. Hoop pine is what that one's made out of. But it's kind of a piecemeal deal, and this is a man lake medium there. And uh, they shorted one of the sides on that, so I couldn't get the box joints to come all the way to the end. I wasn't very happy with man lake over that one. And then, of course, it didn't have a good enough finish, so it's a combination of bad things. And it arced away and left an opening up here. So I have to get this honey super off and replace it. You can see where I did a really half-baked attempt at sealing it up by gluing a piece of uh, wood on the edge there. They've done their best to propolize all this up. That's what they did there. And that's why this time of year, I would really encourage you to look at all your hives make sure that they're aligned and look between the boxes to see if you can see light or to see how much of a gap there is and you may need to dress off those surfaces that come together so that they seat nice and tight because we want the bees to be able to seal them up to keep rain and wind and all that cold weather out that's coming up soon another bee smart insulated inner cover and that is hive alive fondant that pack that's on the top there gonna leave that they still have some of that left now that's a winter fondant by the way but you can put that on at any time if you've got a weak colony and uh, it works pretty good to boost them just about any time of year so this is a medium super that's not in great shape you can even see that the end look at that frame it just fell right off the rabbit joint why because the wood bent away I don't know who the beekeeper is around here, but uh, he has not been keeping up with this equipment. And this happens sometimes because you throw a medium super on last minute, and then before you know it, weeks and months go by, and there it sits. 
So we're going to swap that out. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to see if the Ape May Medium Super is compatible with standard Langstroth wooden equipment. So we're going to set that right on the brood box. And of course the lime green color down there is a slatted rack. And we'll get this off. The white colored frames in here on this top box are permacomb. I don't think that stuff is even being made anymore. I was not a huge fan of it, but I thought I should have some experience with it, test it out so I can give a, uh, an opinion based on personal experience rather than just what I think looking at it. But permacomb, I believe, is not available anymore. Always bring your bucket with you. I have one sitting behind the box there. We want to scrape all this off because when you're reconfiguring a hive, we don't want any burr comb or propolis or anything like that getting in the way of getting everything to snug up when we're reconfiguring a hive. And save it. Don't toss it. That's good stuff. You never know when you might need some propolis or you might need some beeswax. And I always carry two hive tools because I can use them to work together. And if I had a bunch of honey or soft wax there, I would use one tool to scrape off the other. Just makes it easy, fast moving. Yes, I'm fully suited up today. Those are goatskin gloves. And uh, that's because I'm going hive to hive. I don't have a lot of time. Basically one day to deal with all of my colonies. So here we go. This had a queen introduced in her cage, by the way. So we're kind of looking for her, but I want to see the condition of the cage. So we got to get that out of there. They did eat through the candy. I'll show you a close-up of the cage. We've got a lot better population in this hive, by the way, so their chances are much better. Here's the cage. Candy plug is gone. Interestingly, too, they actually chewed up the cork that was in the end. I think that's interesting. I don't think that happens very often. But uh, so she's out, she's in there. And all I need to see is evidence that she's been laying. Although this time of year that can be tough too because most of the queens are falling off of their egg production. Because in this neck of the woods, this is, uh, this is late to be starting with any kind of colony. Lots of bees here though, so I'm kind of comforted by that. The population is not bad and uh, they're very active and the brood cells are clean. That's really important because now we would be looking for scat from mites and things like that. So the varroa mite numbers are low too. That's a good sign. And uh, your treatment window has kind of passed. But for those of you who may have forgotten to treat or couldn't treat, and suddenly you find that there's a whole bunch of mites on the bottom board if you've got the ability to inspect that. Or if you, when you're doing inspections of brood cells and this time of year as they start to shrink the brood, if you see a bunch of little bits and pieces, little specks inside those cells, that can be varroa mite feces. So you need to watch for that. But things are nice and clean here. These bees groom each other extremely well. If you wanna know what stock bees are, these are bee weaver bees. And the queen that I put in there is another bee weaver queen. So the, the last one went through winter. Of course, she swarmed. They all swarmed late in the year. And this particular, these two colonies did not requeen themselves. So that, uh, that left them in a state of guaranteed failure because all that would happen through the winter, they would just, uh, through attrition, they would just die off as they reached the end of their lives. And you would have a big empty hive here that would be robbed out by other bees eventually in spring. So it is worth it to me to go ahead and put that on. Now I wanted to see if this medium APMA Super would be compatible with that bottom brood box. And it isn't. It doesn't fit. How annoying is that? The reason it doesn't fit is because the very top of that... It goes back just far enough not to fit. It fits side to side, but uh, we know that these Flow Hive boxes are a quarter inch narrower side to side. 
but front to back they should be identical. Now the good news is I happen to have a deep Ape MA brood box. So now I'm in more of a configuration change than I originally planned on. This is where it's really important to have backup gear in your shed somewhere. And the other good news here is I have a slatted rack. I wouldn't want to put an Ape MA brood box by itself just on a standard Langstroth bottom board. Because I don't want to break the propolis seal on that. We have a slatted rack, so there's a place for the bees to be down there. And I think I'm going to be able to put an Ape MA deep box right over the slatted rack. So let's get this one separated first. Good news that they're propolized though. I like it when the bees do that. That is their own weather sealing practice. I'm going to get this deep root box off of here. And there's the slatted rack. Look at all the bees that are sitting around down there. So that's a foraging force of bees. Thank goodness this is all stuck together. I do have an entrance reducer piece of wood glued on the front. I'm going to have to go and pry that off though. Because it would get in the way of the Ape May box that I'm about to put on here. Slatted racks create a two inch space from the bottom board to the brood inside the hive and also see that leading edge of wood it blocks winter wind and the queen can go right down there and of course extend her brood although this time of year they're not running their brood down to the entrance because things are cooling off but there you go the Ape May deep 10 frame brood box fit right on that uh, slatted rack so I'm good to go if I didn't have it I would have to replace it with another piece of wood, which I could do, but because I had the APMA equipment laying around, I decided to put it into service. This was unplanned though, because I thought I was only gonna be supering it, but it still works to see if this stuff is compatible with wooden hive equipment, and it apparently is. So I had to go and get a new frame there for the end, because I had pulled one to make room for the queen cage to sit in there. And we're going to transfer everything again remember keeping it in the same order and the same orientation as it was they have lots of honey in there too by the way so that's pretty good honey in the brood box and honey in the medium super it's a double win here i think this colony's chances going through winter are very good they have a brand new queen of course and she's in lay so I think they're going to be okay, and they're going to probably do much better because this hive isn't going to be leaking air and water and everything else. And uh, of course, where that propolis was and that open gap on the back, sure that sealed out wind and rain, but it was offering zero insulation along that seam. So we've got a decent bee population here, especially considering how many are hiding out in the slatted rack. Got great foragers. I'll be watching this hive over the next uh, couple of weeks here to see how they do and I think they're going to be great. Push all your frames to the center again so when you go to inspect in the future you'll be able to push it off to the side and not roll your queen or any of the other bees. Now we'll put the medium super on. Easy as can be and of course we're going to clamp it to the upper clamp. Clamp the other side. These are nice and snug, and because of that little built in overlay that they have, uh, no wind or rain is going to blow through those joints. Just lucky to have that gear. But I'd rather have it in service than sitting around just so I can tell people about it or share different hive configurations. Now we can show them in person, which is kind of what I'm all about teaching about beekeeping and uh, being able to show different configurations is a bonus for me <laughs> and knowing that uh, Ape MA classic hive equipment will also marry up with wooden hive equipment is kind of a good thing to know too. There is a yellow entrance disc on the front there. I don't use that. But in the winter time, if you had a bunch of dead bees on the bottom and they were plugging up the entrance and you couldn't clean them out, which thanks to that 
mouse guard that they have built in there. You can't really scrape out dead bees. On a nice hot day, you could open that yellow disc and give them an entrance through the bottom brood box and then close it up again when the weather uh, cooled again. So then they could come and go even if there were a bunch of dead bees on the bottom. Now the cool thing about that slatted rack also is that it has that leading edge, that uh, solid piece on the front. Often dead bees will pile up on top of that and not plug the entrance which is down below. So slatted racks have a lot of practical use. And uh, do they overall improve honey production or something like that? Not necessarily. They may reduce some bearding because as you've seen here, the bees can now hide inside where the slatted rack is instead of being outside underneath the landing board, prone to predation by skunks and other things, as well as just being chilled by the night air. So and here comes this permacone piece. I notice the permacone fits really tight by the way. And uh, permacone has fully drawn cells made out of food grade plastic. That stuff is heavy by the way. If you fill a super with permacone even without any honey in it, it is the heaviest foundation, the heaviest frame you can put in a hive. So here we go, we'll just push them all together, loaded with honey. So they have the resources already that they need for winter. And uh, if anything, we could offer, you know, a pollen patty late in the year. I generally wouldn't do that unless the colony was struggling. So unlike the other colony that we did, um, where I am gonna have to put feed on because their numbers are so low, this colony, I think, uh, will do fine without it. And the fun part here is too, this B-Smart insulated inner cover fits an Apum A medium super. That's a surprise. I didn't know it, hadn't tried it before. And I'm gonna leave the fondant pack on there as I mentioned before. And then we put the feeder shim on. I do need to insulate the interior side walls of this feeder shim. So I'm gonna go through and run a bead of expansion foam and actually connect it to uh, the insulated inner cover. But I may go a step further and take that uh, Hoover hive that we saw earlier. I'm gonna cut new feeder shims out of that. And of course here we have extra wood that we don't need to use for hives anymore so we can cut it up to make special features, special tools. And that's a B-Max insulated outer cover there. And that's it. I think we're set. Now remember there's a lot of bees on these boxes that we took away so I'm also going to show you how to get those back in the hive. I don't like to just dump them on the ground in front of the hive or something like that. So I take the hive stand, which is what I rest things on when I'm working a beehive instead of putting them on the grass. And you can see there's bees already collected on that. We're gonna go ahead and put the box on there. And when you put it in direct contact with the landing board, the bees that are on that box walk right in and they start spreading their pheromone. We can see the nasen off glands going there. So hive number 18 is in good shape. And this hive actually sits in the shade a lot of the day, so that's kind of a mistake. I would much prefer to set up a brand new hive in the sun. So just to update you, they all went in just fine. Today they're flying normally, and I need to reduce that entrance again. But I think we're in good shape overall. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that I showed you something that will help you along in your planning when it's time to replace equipment that is occupied by your bees. Have a fantastic week and I appreciate you watching. I'm Frederick Dunn and this is The Way to Be.